So when we look at circulation, then differentiating circulation caused dizziness, we have to ask the question, do you feel dizzy or do you feel when you change position or if you turn your head and hold your head in a position, do you actually feel lightheaded? Okay, so there's a big difference between I feel lightheaded. Lightheaded is I might pass out. That's syncopal or actually feel like I'm going to pass out. Okay, whoops. Go right down. So there's where medication comes in again. If I am on a blood pressure medication or a antihypertensive medication and I'm over medicated, normally when I go to stand up, my body should prepare. Just the thought alone should prepare, send a signal to my brain stem, which sends a signal down through the vagus nerve to quickly cause increased contraction and vasoconstriction in my periphery so all my blood doesn't just run down to my legs and I pass right out. But you can see that, you've seen people who have been standing too long at attention, you see those soldiers on YouTube that all of a sudden just pass right out, because their blood is pulling to the periphery and they don't have adequate vestibular, excuse me, not vestibular, but sympathetic tone to cause a constriction of blood vasculature back upward. So now that blood is actually going away from the brain and all of a sudden body says, check out, we need more blood to the brain, all right? Similarly can happen though with excessive hyper, antihypertensive medication or high blood pressure medication. First turning, and then to jump. Okay, I'm driving down Provo Canyon. Yes. Okay, I, I, I'm going to pass a car. I look to my left quickly to see if there's a car alongside me. Uh -huh. Back dizziness, I thought I was going to pass out, going 60 miles an hour. Sure. So the question is, I look over my shoulder to check my blind spot and I come back forward and I feel dizzy. Now was the dizziness a sense of I'm going to pass out? Or was it actually dizzy like the road was moving, no, I was moving? No, nothing was moving. It was a possible pass out. That I was going to pass out. So what we may be looking at in that case again is something that we'd look at as a compromise in blood supply, supply to the brain. Okay, So we want to look at something there specifically with respect to this Epley's response, or again, circulation back to brain. So we'll definitely want to look at something there with you, Sterling. Jen, then Amy. I just think, like, the just when you stand up too fast, and you go, ooh, you feel like you're going to pass out. Oh, blood to the head. Correct. Like it, it's a delayed response when, you, when you're young and active <laughs> and think that your, blood, your brain should have gotten the message. Okay, so now what we're talking about is something that we call systemic, again, vertigo, okay? The systemic vertigo is the positional vertigo associated with what we call orthostatic hypotension. Everybody okay to this point? We're going to erase these now, okay? And again, what we've already gone through is like grade 9, or excuse me, class 900 level, okay, for our undergrad and our postgrad. It's, we're going to be pretty advanced in that. And that, that whole discussion, I just want to introduce to you, because I think it's fascinating how the brain is yoked with the eyes, how the canals are yoked with the ears, and it's just fascinating to me, okay? But let's talk about this concept, Jen, because it's very important that we understand this systemic response and what we call ortho static hypotension. Okay? Everybody knows what hypertension is, right? Hypertension is high blood pressure. Okay? So this is low blood pressure and ortho re refers to at right angles. So if I go from lying to sitting or sitting to standing I've just changed my position by 90 degrees or at right angles, right? So we use this, this uh, geometry sign again that we used a couple weeks ago. Orthostasis means there's not a response, okay? Normally, stasis means no change, but what we should see is as I go from lying to sitting and sitting to then standing, my blood pressure should actually increase by 10 points, okay? So we measure your blood pressure while you're lying down, and then you go to sit up or stand up, and then we recheck it, and it should increase by 10 points. If it doesn't, so as a for example, let's put some numbers in. 
lying down I'm 120 over 80. When I change position that should go immediately to 130 over 90. Okay? If it does not, we have orthostatic hypotension, which means then what we've talked about several times are special sympathetic response glands called the adrenals. There's an adrenal insufficiency. Okay? The adrenals have the responsibility of not only maintaining the cortisol blood sugar levels, they also have the responsibility of maintaining our blood volume. Okay? By releasing a specific hormone called aldosterone, aldosterone is what causes retention of sodium, potassium, magnesium, or electrolytes than to reabsorb <laughs> fluid. Bless you. And what we find is when we lose the normal response of the kidneys with the loss of blood pressure, loss of blood volume, and then the feedback that goes through the lungs to activate what's called angiotensin. This again is going to be 400 level physiology at college, right? Angiotensin is released from the kidneys. Angiotensin converting enzyme is actually released in the lungs and ACE inhibitors are often what people take as a blood pressure reducing medication. Have you ever heard of an ACE inhibitor? Yes, right? ACE inhibitors, ACE, angiotensin converting enzyme, is actually inside of the lungs. So we actually have the kidneys working in concert with, by releasing angiotensin. Angiotensin converting enzyme is in the lungs to create then angiotensinogen, and we actually have then the ability to activate aldosterone to resorb our blood volume or our blood fluid that's being lost in our kidneys. Again, pretty incredible to me, all right? So what happens if this system is being inhibited by our ACE inhibitors? We'll likely have syncopal events when I stand too quickly. So what do we tell the elderly? Have a cane. Slow Hold on to something. Down. Don't stand too quickly, right? Slow down. I told my 80-year-old dad to slow down. Yes. Yeah, he was moving too quick. Yeah, merely says I had to tell my 80-year-old dad, slow down, right? Because he gets up too quickly and the heart doesn't respond, and all of a sudden he's like, whoa, over he goes, right? Now, yeah. wouldn't dehydration also cause that? Absolutely. So the, the next question is dehydration. So those of you who are really active, if you are an athlete and you're getting dehydrated, if you are uh, actually getting sunstroke, right, or heat stroke, those are very common symptoms associated with dehydration, sunstroke, heat stroke, overheating. I feel dizzy. Okay. What else is a common cause of dizziness? Migraineous episodes where the person has a constriction of blood vasculature on one side of the brain, and now I feel this dizziness. Okay. So there are many, many causes. What else? We started talking about this at the very beginning. Low blood sugar. Okay. If I have a low blood sugar, I may feel headaches, but I also may feel lightheaded, dizzy, vertigo, okay? I may experience ringing in my ears, tinnitus, or tinnitus, wherever you came from, tomato, tomato, okay? So blood sugar ringing in the ears is a circulation presentation, very often, and sometimes ringing in the ears is caused by food sensitivities, inflammation in the body, okay? So you're saying low blood sugar causes ringing? Low blood sugar can cause ringing in the ears. Change in circulation can cause ringing in the ears. Inflammation associated with food sensitivities can cause ringing in the ears, okay? I've seen a lot of people with ringing in the ears, when we get them off of the foods that they are most sensitive to, that ringing actually stops, okay? Pretty neat. Any other questions there? Yes, no? Good? Okay. So you can see again, just because I say I'm dizzy doesn't necessarily mean I'm dizzy. It may mean I'm experiencing low 
heart rate, okay? So arrhythmias or high heart rate heart rates, tachycardia, may cause dizziness or syncopal or lightheaded events. Usually when we have, we differentiate the sensation of dizziness, ask, are you describing a sensation of feeling lightheaded, okay? Yeah, I feel lightheaded. I feel like I'm not getting enough blood to my head. If I change positions too quickly, I feel like, oh, I'm going to lose it, right? That was me when I actually had gone hunting after living at sea level for two years. I was down in Texas for two years. I came back to Utah. I'm up at 9,000 feet. I remember one day I hiked and hiked and hiked. I got to the top of this hill, and I was looking out over this canyon. I was holding on my bow and arrow, and all of a sudden, I, thankfully, I was right by this big drop-off into this canyon. I was standing by this tree, and all of a sudden I could just feel myself going forward, and I smashed. I remember I couldn't do anything with my arms or hands. I thought, I'm going to fall over. And I did. I smashed my head right into this tree and just collapsed at it, thankfully. And I just sat there. And I, I said, thank you, God, because <laughs> I thought I was going over, but I smashed into this tree. What had happened is, basically, I had hyperventilated. I, my blood volume and my red blood cells were not acclimated to where I had suddenly come from sea level to 9,000 feet. And so consequently, I'm standing there and just, boom, I'm starting to pass out, okay? That was a weird sensation. Some of you have experienced something like that <coughs> with pregnancy. You go to get up too quickly and you feel, oh my goodness, where am I going? You're going to pass out, okay? Because again, our legs act as a giant reservoir. In fact, one-third of our blood volume is re reserved or in store in our legs, okay? These giant reservoirs. When you have this dam or block that's sitting there in your pelvis, the blood may not return as quickly. You might feel a syncopal event or a sense of dizziness or more expressly lightheadedness. Okay, so looking at that again. People experience anxiety, this chest pressure, get into a scary or un unnerving situation and they start to feel lightheaded. Okay, breathing rapidly and shallowly can actually cause a sense of lightheadedness. So differentiating that with the children as well, if they're in a situation where they can't catch their breath, okay, or they feel anxiety. Is 